All right, I'm finally going to buy the Arterio Keystep Mark II. Been waiting for it for a long time now. It's been a few weeks. I actually canceled an order and now I'm going to pick one up from a local store instead. Uh, wish me luck. All right, we've arrived at Long and McQuaid. I'm super excited, I'm headed in. I've just discovered my band piece. All right, here it is. We got it. Let's go. I'm excited. Very excited. Let's get going. Got the key lab. It's right back there. You can see it. Uh, pretty excited, but the most exciting part about today was that I found my music on the shelves of this Long & McQuay, which is awesome. Like, it's like, oh, I think I'm a professional composer now. I made it. It's my music is in the stores alongside their whole collection of music from Beethoven, Chopin, or any like band composers of these days. Yeah, so if you're in the Vancouver area, go to Long & McQuay Terminal, Grade 3 section, and Carpe Diem is available. But anyways, now it's time to go home and test this thing out. All right, so it's been a solid three weeks or so since the filming of what you just saw, but I'm wearing the same top for continuity's sake. Uh, I've been using this bad boy for a couple weeks now, and I've been testing it out to see if it works in my film scoring slash virtual orchestration workflow. And so far, it seems to be really good. And I'll just talk about what the advantages are for the Keylab 88 Mark II for film scoring, and I'll talk about some of the disadvantages that I've found as well. So one thing that I really love about it is that it's really small. Because it doesn't have the mod wheel on the side like other keyboards and instead they're up here, the pitch and the mod, as a result of that it's saving, you know, anywhere from 5 to 10 inches worth of space that other keyboards would have. Likewise, the keyboard is very low and thin, which means right now you can see that I have it on a desk, which is below my other desk, so it's kind of a tiered, layered setup. And it only works because it's so small. If it were any bigger or thicker, it'd be really hard because the typing keyboard would be a little too low for me, while the MIDI controller would be a little too high. It's also not too deep, which means I can easily access all of the controls without having to reach far, and if I have anything behind it, I can even reach into that area without having too much stress in the shoulder or the neck area. Another thing that I love about it is that it's so pretty. The white finish is really nice, it matches my white desk and you know, it just looks really clean and modern. All of the controls on it, the lights, the way it flickers when you don't use it for a while, the screensaver mode, it's really pretty. Actually, let's take a look at it right now. Are you seeing that? Those colors are very nice. And you know, of course, having something like this is not gonna make the controller sound better or play better or anything, but because it's inspiring, it can lead you to kind of sit down more and you play more, you create more. So indirectly, it kind of does affect your music making. And as I'm sure a lot of you that are interested in this keyboard are probably interested because of the breadth of controllers on the keyboard itself. You've got nine faders, you've got 16 drum pads, you've got transport controls for your DAW, you've got a bunch of assignable buttons, pitch and mod, octave transposing and all that stuff, as you would expect. And because a huge part of film scoring is controlling CCs on the fly and controlling key switches, 
having all of these little faders is really handy. Usually I'm just using the first two, but they're really easy to use as you can see in the B-roll as well. And I use the 16 drum pads as key switch controls. So the first line is going to be long. And then the second line I have assigned to shorts. Lots of people tend to go for a kind of minimalist keyboard and add a bunch of controllers on top of that. So like the nano control or maybe something more expensive like the X touch or fader port, you know, stuff like that. But with this, it's a really all in one setup. And you can take this out playing live and you can be controlling stuff like main stage with it. It even gives you a music stand and a computer stand that you can put on on stage. And that means you can read off music, you can control your computer right next to the keyboard. It just works. The people at Arteria just really thought about all the controls and the ergonomics. Now whether this layout works for film scoring, I'll talk about a little bit more later. And as I just mentioned, the DAW controls on the keyboard are awesome. It's compatible with so many different DAWs and they give you these little magnetic strips that you can just stick on top of the transport buttons and they'll be working for whatever DAW you use. So let's say you are a Cubase user and then maybe you wanna to switch to Ableton Live. Well, you can do that because they provide all of these controls and you don't have to reassign stuff or learn the proper mappings for each DAW. It's all right here, so that's really handy. And also right in the middle of the keyboard where you can see the screen, there are three options. There's a button for Analog Labs, which is the provided software by Arteria uh, that contains a whole bunch of different sounds. And there's the DAW mode, which we just talked about, which lets you use all of these transport controls. You can use the drum pads to launch clips in Ableton and stuff like that as well. Or you can use them to drum or key switch or whatever you're doing. So after the DAW button, you have the user mode button which allows you to assign basically whatever you want to the keyboard using the mapping software provided by Arteria. So this is what I use when I'm scoring. So I have modulation and expression in the faders. I have the drum pads assigned to key switch values that I need and so on and so forth. You can customize it any way you want. You can even name it and you can have up to 10 user presets. So you can have one for your scoring. Maybe you have one for your main stage live playing. Maybe you have one for mixing, you know, so on and so forth. It's really handy. And as I mentioned before, the included stand and computer stand are just amazing thought out things that Arteria just, I wish every keyboard manufacturer did that from now on because it just makes sense and it's so smart. Just being able to extend the surface using the computer stand and just safely putting your computer there, your MacBook there, your whatever your multi-thousand dollar computer is, it's perfect and convenient and well thought out. So points to Arteria for that. Now having used this keyboard for about a month or so, there are some disadvantages that I've found. The biggest one of those is that the keys are very heavy. The keybed is basically the Fatar TP 100 LR keybed, which I believe is used also in the Native Instruments S88 and also the Studio Logic keyboard. And some people do really like this heavy action, and I thought I would too because I am a fan of heavy action because most MIDI controllers and digital pianos these days are way too light compared to a grand piano and they don't really give you that accuracy and velocity control that you want from a heavier keyboard like a grand piano. The thing is with this piano, it is heavier than a grand piano I've found. And as a result, when I'm doing really fast passages like runs, some of the notes in between don't get triggered the way I want them to or they'll be played way too lightly. And you know, I kind of end up with a jumble of notes that don't really make sense. They're also pretty loud. As you can hear compared to my voice. And as you can hear, the key sounds are very bassy and thuddy, which means they will travel to other rooms if you're playing at night or if you have people that are a little sensitive to sound. Similarly, these buttons are a little clicky which is good because I like to have the feedback and know that something got pressed, but I wish they were slightly quieter so that they're not so much of a nuisance when you're using them. Now, if some of you guys watching are from the Virtual Orchestration Facebook group, you might remember that at some point I posted a mock-up sketch kind of thing based on the Keylab Arteria 88 of an ideal setup keyboard that I really wanted for the purpose of film scoring or any kind of music production. With that keyboard, I have the faders on the left side, which is basically what makes sense for all of us, because a lot of the time, we're gonna be playing with our right hand and we want our left hand to be doing the CC controls. Now, having it where it is right now is okay for the most part when I'm playing higher lines or even in the middle of the keyboard, 
But once I get to lower tuba notes or contra bassoon, contra bass, then it becomes a bit of an ergonomic nightmare. But it's not a huge issue because I can use the octave transposition buttons and easily just transpose the keyboard down so that I can play up here and use the faders over here. But again, that kind of defeats the purpose of having an 88 key keyboard. And while I mentioned that I use key switches with the drum pads, because they're so far away from the faders, I find that it's kind of difficult to jump back and forth between using the CC controls and activating a certain key switch, which is why I wish the drum pads and the faders were closer together, but I think most 88 keyboards on the market will not have that. And finally, because most of the casing is plastic, it will be a little weaker if you're moving it around a lot. So if you're using it just in your studio, it's probably not an issue. But if you are using it for gigging, you should be very careful not to let it smash or crack or, you know, do all, any of those plasticky things. And I say this because I come from using a Yamaha S90ES, which has, you know, wooden sides and it's a much sturdier build. So even if it bumps against something, it's probably not going to be a huge issue. But with the Arteria, I would be more careful. And finally, the verdict that you were all waiting for. Will I keep the Arteria and keep on using it for film scoring? Does it work for film scoring? My answer is, it works for film scoring, but due to the heavy touch, I will be returning it. Part of this is influenced because previously I really liked the touch of the M Audio Hammer 88, but I didn't get it because it lacked the controls and it was a little too big for my tastes. But now with the release of the M Audio Hammer 88 Pro, which came out about a month or two before the release of this video, I have decided to return the Arteria Keylab 88 Mark II and instead go for the M Audio Hammer 88 Pro. So I have ordered the M Audio now and it is on its way. It might take a couple more weeks though. And I will be returning the Arteria and going back to my Yamaha S94 now. If you have any questions about the M Audio or just comparing the two with the Arteria and the M Audio, let me know in the comments below. If you are okay with the photaric touch of the keyboard, then you know this is like a match made in heaven for you. It's the perfect keyboard. I would use it 100% until they released a version with the faders on the left side. I would have nothing to complain about it really. Now because of the touch of the keyboard, which is such a fundamental thing to a keyboard itself and the value of it, it doesn't work for me, I'm returning it, but I really wish the keyboard was a little better for my tastes. And I hope the M Audio will fulfill my needs instead. Anyways, if you liked the video, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.